So I'd like to say a few words about fear. Now I'm not so much thinking about the kind of numbing fear you'd feel during shelling, the kind of numbing fear in Sarajevo during the 1990s or in Syria today. Nor am I thinking about the fears that parents might feel in the countries where children are being robbed away to serve in revolutionary armies. What I'm thinking about today are the fears we create as we go about our daily lives. Of course, there are relationships between the numbing fears and the seemingly smaller fears we create in our social lives. I'd like to emphasize that I say some of the things that I'm going to say because I am a folklorist by profession. I study something you might wish to call the social imaginary. I'm interested in what people communicate to each other in stories, in popular images, in legends. Uh, in these kinds of stories, people often communicate things they find it difficult to say openly to one another. Let's go back in time to the 1860s and the 1870s. I often have occasion to think about all the people who left my then impoverished country, Sweden, uh, and other poor countries. Some of them founded new communities, for example, in New Sweden, Maine, which I have had occasion to write about, or communities such as Linsborg in Kansas. But the world these people left, they were worlds of astounding scarcity. Food was in limited and finite, finite supply all over present Europe. In that world, stories abounded, and you'd be surprised when you find out how many there were. Stories abounded about neighbors out to steal one's food. Stories also abounded about supernatural beings who milked one's cows in secret. And those who came from Sweden or left many regions, such as Värmland or Smola, regions that were full of huge and thick forests. And according to so many stories, these forests were populated with beings. They were horrifying, giants and trolls, even the nice little popta that you find out in your gardens here in Innsbruck were really uh, capricious and kind of dangerous beings. And all these beings, they threaten you if you abuse the resources, if you fished or hunt, did too much, if you stole from one another. Um, these beings could punish you in horrifying ways if you did not hold on to the Christian values. But they all have to do, there was so much, it's astounding how much of these stories of the peasant world have to do with a world of scar scarcity, a world of fears of starvation, a world in which neighbors or beings, supernatural beings, were out to steal the little you had. Now, as we know, it was not so easy always for those who left that world to resettle into this one. But they did resettle. Many became successful, economically and in other ways, astoundingly so. so. And in time, the settlers and their descendants, you and I, as well as millions and millions of other people <laughs> in America and in Europe and also in parts of Asia, came to experience unprecedented prosperity. Um, this was, in a greater, great extent, due to industrialization. And there was tremendous prosperity and tremendous resources were created, even though not everybody had access to them, even though the resources were unevenly distributed, as they are. And also in our post-industrial world, resources remain 
amazingly plentiful by comparison to what they were in the 19th century. Fewer people than ever before on Earth today uh, fear starvation. People live stunningly much longer, longer than they did 100 or 150 years ago. I'd like to refer to a fantastic work by the Swedish scientist Hans Rosling, who would tell about these things in ways you find the stuff. Oh, but today, and even in our post-industrial world of other troubles, supplies have a kind of endless quality in the air, as you did it, I mean. But the thing is, we remain fearful. We are perhaps as fearful as we ever were before. Our fears have not subsided. They certainly have not subsided in our popular imaginary. Stories and rumors circulate today just as they did in the late 19th century Europe. But the stories do not have to do with fear of starvation. What do they have to do with? A lot of fear of contamination. Fear of contamination to our food. Fear of invasions from unknown sources. You've heard some of these stories, rat claws <coughs> or human fingers that have been said to be found in food. Certain restaurants are said to be serving all kinds of unknown things, roadkill or rats. <laughs> uh, the fear of theft by <coughs> neighbors in a world of limited supplies, the world that we have left behind us, that fear of theft has given way to fear of unobservable contaminations created by, in part, unknown methods of food processing. In the midst of our abundance, we have created a social imaginary of fear of destruction and contamination. Now, many of the stories that circulate today are no more objectively true than the stories that circulated in peasant Europe. Yet, we should pay attention to what the social imaginary tells us, what these stories tell us. Although we know more than ever before around the, about the world, the entire world, although we know much more than before via the media, Many of us often feel we really don't know. We have no real control about of what we find out. We have no real, we think we are living in a world, are they facts or what are, we, what are we getting? In that sense, we feel perhaps often even less control than our peasant forebears did. We fear unobservable mysteries out there, just as our grandparents did. Now, I have no solutions. Of course not. But I think that we would do well listening to what the popular imaginary is telling us about our fears, and of course about our wishes and hopes. We should not only listen to it, we should also reflect on what is being said. And I think it is very important to reflect historically and comparatively. It is important that we over and over take a step back and think about our current fears, our current situation, in the light of other people's fears and situations. In a sense, and I think this is important, reflection pushes our horizons. Reflection may not alleviate our fears, but it may, may make it possible for us to understand our lives better than before. And what's more, it may make us far more secure in our search for solutions. Let's not search for solutions in fear. Thank you.